and Mrs. Knorr, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. suit I had on. Nobody complained about the way I looked all day. Do we have to go formal? Well, it's our anniversary. Wouldn't it be nice to look nice? After all, we've been married five years. Yeah. Formal on our wedding day. As I remember, we got married on a Friday afternoon during your lunch hour. <laughs> and what a lunch hour it was. I never had such indigestion. I don't think I had time for indigestion that day. I was just getting started in business, and why my office was knee-deep in bill collectors. But you were so romantic in those days, darling. You used to take me to the park on Sunday afternoons and let me listen to you snore on the grass. <laughs> All ready to go out, huh? Don't you think you ought to uh, wear a hat? I just have to slip into my dress. Just slip into my dress, and you know how long that takes. What in the world have you been doing all this time? You were just like that 15 minutes ago. Now, don't make me nervous. After all, this is our anniversary. Now, where did you find this letter? It was sort of sticking out of your pocket. Are you sure you didn't just sort of smell it out? That's a very talented little nose you're wearing. Now, don't you dare hint that I was suspicious, Jerry North. I know it was strictly business. Well, after all, darling, I am a publisher, and publishers have to have authors. Oh, this French woman is the hottest thing in town. I'm sure she is. Oh, my goodness, look at your tie. Congratulations, dear. I'm sure she means a lot to you. Now, no, kitty, kitty, she means a lot of dough. Good for at least one novel a year, some short stories, and the byproducts. It's a perfectly wonderful anniversary present, dear. The things we'll be able to do with that money. Yeah, you mean the things you'll be able to do. Oh, Jerry, there's a spot on your coat. Uh, Take it off. Oh. I'll get the spot removed. I didn't want to wear the thing anyway. I can't even wear a regular suit. Because I want to dress up. Oh, I'll get it. But, but, but Pam, finish dressing. Coming. Who is it, Pam? Nobody. Oh, who rang the bell? That's just if there wasn't anybody there. Just this. Why in the world would anyone send us a pair of dolls? I don't know, but there's no card in the box, and there was no name on the outside. That's funny. Of course, one of our friends could have sent it. Bill Wigand was best man at our wedding. He knew about our anniversary. Bill doesn't usually go in for gags, but... Oh, my glory! Blood, Jerry! Blood! Oh, now, don't get excited, honey. Well, how do you expect me to feel? Somebody's trying to murder me. Oh, how do you figure that? Well, this is our anniversary, and, and the bride's been knifed in the back. Well, you're hardly a bride anymore, darling. Just the same, I don't like it. It wouldn't have been left here if it wasn't meant for me. I'm going to call Bill Wigand. Oh, now, wait a minute. There must be some explanation for this. I don't need any explanation. With a friend like Bill on the police force, why take any chances? Homicide, Lieutenant Wigand speaking. 
Oh, hello, Pam. Happy anniversary. Uh, Bill, are, are you busy right now? I mean, can you come up here right away? Because if you don't, uh, I'm afraid something dreadful is going to happen. Yes, I, I think somebody's trying to kill me. <laughs> Getting a doctor, Pam. She's dead. Oh, how awful. Now, now, don't go to pieces, dear. I know who she is. Who? The woman that lives at the end of the hall, Mrs. Barry. Mrs. Barry? I always thought that woman was single. Well, she lives alone, but she was a divorcee. And she was getting married again? Well, I guess so, or she wouldn't be wearing that dress. Then those dolls might have been meant for her. That's right, those dolls might have been meant for her. And they were delivered here by mistake. Hello, hello, Something hello. Let's find out who... Hello. Hello. Golly, what's that? Hello. The phone, dear. You hello, left hello, the receiver hello. off the hook. Oh, my goodness. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, Bill. Are you still there? Still here? This receiver's practically growing out of my ear. What happened? Something dreadful. The woman down the hall, she was murdered practically in our apartment. No, we didn't see it happen. She just staggered into our, into our apartment with a knife in her back. Someone must have stabbed her when she was dressing for the wedding. No, her wedding. Of course we know she's dead. Her name is Mrs. Barry, Bill, and she lives down the hall from us. Or at least she used to. Uh, tell him about the dolls, dear. Oh, yes, the dolls, Bill. Dolls. D-O-L-L-S. Yes, but here's the weird part of the whole thing. They both had a knife in the back. Not the bride and groom. Oh, not the bride and groom. The bride and the woman who fell into the apartment. Yeah, that's right. Now, tell him about the blood. Oh, yes, Bill. Did I tell you about the blood? The bride had a tiny knife stuck in her back, and there was blood all around it. Real blood. Of course I'm upset. Oh, Pam, tell him we'll fill in the details when he gets here. We'll fill in the details when you get here. All right, Bill, we'll, we'll be expecting you, but, but come right over. Jerry, where is it? What? What do you want? The doll. I've got the groom. I want the bride. Are you the one that brought them here? That's beside the point. Just give me the doll. Why? Why do you want it? That's my business. Oh, now, just a minute. You can't come here. Be quiet. They were men, not for you, but for her. What's she got to do with it? It's none of your business. Stay right where you are. Quit, Jerry. Get your coat on. We're going after her. Come on. Pam, get away from that body. Can't you keep that pretty little nose of yours out of other people's business? You know what they say about curiosity. Now, come on. I was only turning out the light. And I'm no cat, Mr. North. I know, but you shouldn't. Over there, one of those two brownstone fronts. Someone just closed the door. Come on. Let's see, it, it was either this one or the one next door. Now, from where we were standing... Pam, look. Someone turned on the light in our apartment. I'm sure I turned it off. Stay here, I'm going to investigate. I'll be right back. Be careful.
Hello, police headquarters. Uh, Lieutenant Wagon, please. This is Jerry North calling. Oh, he's already on his way to my home. Well, then he should be here any minute. All right, don't move or I'll shoot. No, you don't. The missing bridegroom, eh? No! Oh. Ah, what's your hurry? Hi, Jerry. What happened to you? I forgot to duck. <laughs> Come on in, Doc. What do you make of it, Doc? Yeah, in about half an hour. Not much doubt about the cause. I didn't do it. Do what? She was late getting to the church. We were all standing around, waiting, so I came back to see what was wrong. You know, a groom never sees the bride on their wedding day. Ah, take it easy, mister. What's your name? Gibson, Ray Gibson. We were going to be married. You and uh, this woman here? Yes. I couldn't imagine what was keeping her until I came back and saw her lying there on the floor. Then I didn't know what to do. So you hid behind the screen? Yes, I, I thought you might be the murderer coming back to the scene of the crime. Jerry, do you know this man? Did you ever see him before? Never laid eyes on him. He was here when I came in. You better sit over there, Mr. Gibson. I think you and I better have a little talk. Apartment 4A, Barry, Edward, and Louise. Louise, no matter how you regard my art. Well, I, I... And you did disobey me, didn't you? You took those outlandish dolls over to her apartment, didn't you? No. Where have you been for the last hour and 45 minutes? What did you do? Go to the wedding? No, well, the wedding didn't take place. Why not? Because she was murdered before she left the apartment. Louise. I didn't do it. You know I wouldn't kill her. I don't know anything of the kind. I only know you spent enough time on those crazy dolls. But only to frighten her. Only to ruin her wedding the way she ruined your whole life. Forgive you for what? Disobeying me? Committing murder? I've told you a thousand times I didn't want you to go over there. If you weren't my sister, I'd... Who are you? What do you want? I'm Mrs. North. I live across the street. Come in, Mrs. North. How nice of you to call on us. Oh, that's very nice of you, but Jerry told me... Come in, Mrs. North. All you've been doing for time. Now, if you know who might have done it, tell me. It's Mrs. Barry's ex-husband. He's hated her ever since she divorced him. And he threatened to kill her if she married me. When was this? Just last week. A crazy fool, he's out of his mind. Where can I locate him? He lives right on the street, in a brownstone front. Brownstone front? Right across the street? Yes. Pam. Pam! Well, I, I really must be going. You shouldn't have come here in the first place. But I told you, I, I was looking for a woman who took something from our apartment. 
I have every reason to believe that she's here. What did she take? Some dolls. They were connected with a murder. You could be mistaken about this woman. I know she's here because I heard her voice. If I were you, I'd forget what you heard. Pam! Hey, Pam! Don't move, Mrs. North. My husband, he's looking for me. Well, tell him where you are. Pam, Pam, answer me. Jerry! Jerry, don't come in. Pam, are you all right? Yeah, yes, I'm just fine. Jerry, this is Mr. Barry. Oh, yes, I've, I've heard of Mr. Barry. Why is it so dark in here? Something wrong with the lights? No. But if you don't mind, I'd rather not turn them up. What's the matter? Afraid someone might get a good look at your face? Yes. Several years ago, I was burned in a fire. Oh, I'm Just... sorry. You needn't be. Nobody else is. Won't you sit down, please? Now, perhaps you will enlighten me as to the purpose of your visit. Well, tonight a woman was murdered, practically in our apartment. That still doesn't explain your visit. Do you live alone, Mr. Barry, or are you married? I was married. And I'd rather not talk about my wife. She was in the fire, too. Oh? That's how I burned my face. Trying to drag her out of the flames. You didn't succeed? On the contrary. I saved her life. And she rewarded me by getting a divorce. Then you are the same, Mr. Barry. I mean... What do you mean? Well, she means that your ex-wife has an apartment in our building. And that it's quite possible that you murdered her. Almost anything is possible, Mr. North. But I haven't seen my ex-wife in years. But you have seen the woman with the dolls. She lives right here in this apartment. Don't be absurd. Then why is there a woman's name on the mailbox downstairs? Who is Louise Barry? My sister. Well, where is she? We'd like to see her. Say where you are, Mr. North. Oh, so you were lying. And that whole story about the fire and saving your wife was just an alibi to cover up what you know about the murder. Don't be a fool, Mr. North. I told you the truth about the fire and everything else. Well, you did. Well, let's see. <laughs> foolish thing for you to do, Mr. North. Well, we'll be leaving now. But I'm not gonna let you go just yet. Let us go. There's no time to explain, Mr. North. And I wouldn't advise you to make a move. What are you going to do? Make sure that you don't notify the police. But you can't get away. Stay where you are, Mr. North. Don't make a sound. I'll be through with you in just a few minutes. Stay there. Sit down. Do as I tell you. Sit down, Mr. North. OK, OK. And stay there. Louise, get my money out of the dresser and put on your coat. We're leaving right away. Then your sister was in there. She's the one that killed Mrs. Barry, and you're trying to protect her. I told you to keep quiet. This is insane, Edward. Don't argue with me. Do as I tell you. Go out in the hallway and see if it's clear. I'm afraid it is, Mr. Barry. Drop that knife. Drop it, I said. Oh, Bill. 
And you came just in time. Mr. Barry's sister committed the murder, and he's trying to take her away to protect her. That's a lie. I had every reason to kill her after what she did to my brother, but I didn't do it. Well, then who did? Why, he did, of course, just as I told you, Lieutenant. The motive is written all over his face. You're quite right. The motive is written on my face. What's left of it? Hold him, Lieutenant. You kill me, too. Why? Who is this man, Bill? Mr. Gibson, Pam. He was engaged to Mrs. Barry. He's the one who turned on the light in the apartment. I found him hiding in there. He was? Yes. I was walking down the hall. The door was open. I saw her lying there on the floor, so I went right in. Oh, that's very interesting, Mr. Gibson. What? The fact that you saw Mrs. Barry's body through the open door of our apartment. If that's your story, it's not a very good one. Now, what do you mean by that, Pam? When we left the apartment, we closed the door. Well, somebody else must have opened it then. Probably him to make sure she was dead. I haven't left this studio tonight. Can you prove that? I can. My brother never left this house. How would you know? You were in our apartment two minutes after Mrs. Barry was murdered. There, you see. Bill. Uh, not now, Pam. Please, please. Lieutenant, you saw that knife in his hand when we came in? And my fiancé was killed with a knife. Fingerprints were saw that. And they may be his. Bill, will you listen a moment? Just oh, a Pam, dear. Now, why would I want to kill her? I was going to marry her. Lieutenant, that poor woman is lying there on the floor while you stand here trying to figure out a case that's as plain as day. Don't try to tell me my business, Gibson. Well, somebody ought to. I'm going back across the street. I'm afraid that's no good. The coroner's there now. Look, look. What is it, Pam? What is paper clipping? Oh, for heaven's what? sakes. I have no time to read the news. Lieutenant, now. Anytime you want to find me, I'll be at my home. 123 Fifth Avenue. And just make sure you don't try to leave town. How are things in Philadelphia, Mr. Gibson? What's that? I said, how are things in Philadelphia? Pam, dear, what are you talking about? This. Hmm? Look. Where'd you get this news clipping? It was clutched in Mrs. Barry's hand when she died. Mm. So Just a minute, you. So that's what you were fussing around the body for. Mm. Gibson, huh? You're Joe Marcus, swindler, confidence man. And bigamist. <laughs> he was a swindler, all right. And when she found out about him, he came back here and murdered her on a wedding night. Jerry, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Well, darling, what's the matter? No, oh, I'm just disgusted, that's all. Here I got into this monkey suit, and we planned to have such a wonderful evening. What happened? Our whole anniversary is ruined. Oh, I wouldn't say it was ruined. Well, almost 2 o'clock. What can we do now? Jerry, don't be such a grump. After all, there are lots of ways of celebrating an anniversary. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy, a John Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.